Welcome, happy Mother's Day, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, um, whenever you are going to watch this video. I personally recommend just watching it the morning of uh, Sunday morning, your normal time to worship, and I hope that all of, uh, as all of you join us that you are um, glad to be tuning in. I know that I'm glad to be here uh, getting to do this as we, this morning we're going to honor moms, but before we get there, I want to say a few things and make a few announcements. Um, first, you just got done watching the uh, quarantine videos and so our photos there's a video that we made of the collage of photos and uh, they were really good this week it was going to be really hard to, to pick a winner but we did i'll get there in a second but first we want to kind of keep that going it's really nice to get to see all of you um, each and every week we miss out on our fellowship time so it's kind of cool to see what people are doing and what they're up to and uh, to kind of get to visit that way i guess as we watch those videos so Text the quarantine photo to 330-422-8126. You can do that right now. You can do that in a little bit, uh, but we encourage you to do that. Make sure you have those to us by Tuesday because it takes us a little time to get the video done, and so we want to get those in as soon as possible. So please do that. Now time for the winner here. Here's the winner. Right there. So the winner is Dan Casimir. Thank you, Dan. Everybody needs a little bit of a, a laugh during this time. You need to use some humor. Somebody get that man some toilet paper. Um, and uh, I've, I've got some extra if you need some, Dan. Come to the church, whatever you need. Um, but uh, thank you for that. Remember to text your quarantine photos uh, to the number there um, that you can see. You can always rewind if you forget it. <laughs> Thanks, Dan. Uh, we also saw that it was his birthday on there during the quarantine, so happy birthday. I um, hope you had a good one. Now, just to give you a few updates here, I want to give you a, a few updates. Actually, I actually want to give you a third. I need to make sure that I remember to do that. I just didn't get it in here in time. Um, but uh, so you know, what we're going to start doing is just pre-recording our services to kind of avoid some of the glitches that we've had with the live stream over the past couple weeks. So now you will be able, able to watch our services beginning at 9 a.m. on Sunday morning. Uh, you can watch them. You can go to watch them on Facebook there. We will have them up on our YouTube channel as well. We encourage you, if you're able to, to watch them on Facebook and host a Facebook watch party. It, um, uh, one of the things that the watch party will allow you to do is it will allow you to connect with people in your growth groups or people in the church and watch it at the same time. So it kind of gives you the feeling that you're having church together. Uh, growth group leaders, I really strongly encourage you uh, to schedule Facebook watch party. Uh, with people in your growth group so that you can uh, watch and tune in together. I think that'll be kind of meaningful. And then really the third thing uh, I just want to point out here, just say I was reminded of it again today. I've heard this a, a number of times and I heard it again today that um, uh, calls into uh, uh, um, mental health services and, and the counselors are up like a thousand percent right now. Now, one of the great things about our, our growth groups is that our growth groups help you connect to people, but we know that you can't be connected with people right now. So if you are a growth group leader, make sure that you are calling people in your group to check in on them, to see how they are doing, to um, see how they're doing spiritually, see how they're doing mentally, see how they're just making it through even financially, whatever they need, make sure that you are calling one another. And I'm so glad to hear that so many people in our church are doing it. I know I heard uh, recently that Kelly Barringer, as she was going on walks, she's just calling people in our church and checking in on, on them. Uh, continue to do things like that, and thank you for doing that, Kelly. If you don't have anybody to call, or if you feel like you don't have anybody to call or to reach out to, please, please, please um, call the church. If one of the pastors are in, we will uh, speak to you uh, or send us an email. We can schedule a Zoom time uh, call with you or do something to just kind of help you out and um, to just kind of be there for you at this time. So don't forget to do that. Don't call the number that was for the quarantine photos. That's a Google number. And so you won't get a hold of anybody if you call that number. Only the photos go there. Um, but you go to our website and check out our, our number and also find our, our emails there. Now I, I want to um, introduce you to some missionaries that we support, the Kim family. Uh, every second Wednesday or every second Sunday uh, we pray uh, for a, a missionary, and um, the Kim sent us a video and kind of wanted to update us on how they are doing. And so now you can watch the video.
We are Daniel, Christy, and Sophie Kemp, and we live in Budapest, Hungary. We are Church of God missionaries here in the region of Europe and the Middle East, and we primarily work with preparing and encouraging the next generation of leaders here in the region. We're part of the Three Worlds team, and one of the main tasks that we have is helping to coordinate Three Worlds Leadership Network, 3WLN. Uh, this is a big uh, assignment for Christy, and you want to tell us about that real quick? Yeah, so we get together as a network uh, in person every 15 months. Um, and we started in 2015, and we were to have our fourth uh, event this April, and things have changed a little bit, but it's uh, a big process to get visas and everyone gathered together, but it's also one of the most um, synergistic and encouraging events that our, our team helps uh, coordinate. And so uh, it's a pleasure to get to see everybody in one room together from all different countries and multiple languages and hear their hearts and passions and what God's doing in their region. Additionally, together we uh, coordinate and facilitate Europe X, which grew as a sub-network of 3WLN, and it is a gathering of young leaders and church planters all throughout the region of Europe and the Middle East uh, who are focused on church planting and church multiplication. So we're excited to be able to do these things in the region. We thank you so much for your support and care for our family. We think of you often, and we love you very much. Kissing them safe on these let. It was great to see the Kims in that video. Just so you know, we have increased our giving to the Kims uh, this year. They were very thankful for that. Um, and uh, I just wish them the best. It's been a very difficult time for a lot of our missionaries uh, around the globe as they are dealing with the virus and the pandemic themselves. And so we want to make sure that as a church that we continue to um, support uh, missions. Uh, we also, those of you who know, um, Danny and Kim Lopez, we have now decided to start supporting them who are in Guatemala as well, and so looking forward uh, to partnering with them. I do want to uh, talk about giving a little bit. First and foremost, I am really thankful uh, for the way that many of you have stepped up. You continue to give, you continue to tithe. We've raised money for the coronavirus fund, and you've done a really good job. Uh, we thank you for doing that. Uh, some people are still mailing in their tithes, all of that, and so thank you so much. If you want to begin giving online, you can do that. Um, we don't really, we're not really encouraging you to get out, especially if you're high risk and older. And so you can go to firstchurchtalmage.com slash donate or just go to firstchurchtalmage.com and donate and you can give. Uh, we consider giving part of worship. And so we are glad that many of you are continuing to worship in that way. Now, uh, this will be the first morning that we've had Pastor Mindy with us here in our service. She's uh, been... Um, uh, doing her own thing uh, to help the kids on each and every Sunday morning as she's been live. And so we're glad to have her here with us tonight. And she's going to lead us in prayer as we continue in our service. Happy Mother's Day. Let's go to prayer. Lord God, I thank you for all that you are. I want to thank you for every mother that is tuning in this morning. I thank you for all the moms that uh, have blessed the many people in our church. I thank you for all the moms that have had to step up lately in new uh, ways that they never had to before. I ask you to bless them all this morning. Help them to be encouraged and strengthened by you. Lord, I just thank you for this church and all that we have done right now. I just ask you to continue to help us to be able to meet together through this time of staying at home. Lord, I thank you for everyone that's tuning in. I just ask you to help them to leave knowing that they have connected with their church family, but most importantly, that they have connected with you. We ask you to keep uh, blessing uh, this community, Lord, as the economy is changing, Lord. We just ask you to be with us all. Help us to be there for one another. Lord, I thank you for the missionaries out there doing uh, amazing work. We thank you for the update we had today, and we ask you to continually be with them. We also ask you to be with Florica this morning. Just comfort her and touch her and be with her and be with Terry and the, uh, Terry's family. Just, Lord, help Terry's family and give them comfort. We thank you, Lord, for that. 
We thank you for Pastor Josh and how he offers the message. And we ask for a blessing on the message today that we will receive it and hear a word from you, Lord God, that will touch our hearts, encouraging us and strengthening us through all the difficulties we have right now. Again, we thank you, Lord, and we praise you for everything you've done. We ask this in the name of Jesus. Amen. And Jesus said, Come. To all mothers and all children, he said, Come. To the motherless and the childless, he said, Come. To all who want to be a mother, he said, Come. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble of heart, and you will find rest for your souls. As we come to worship, let us praise the one who gives us rest. Happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there. I love you all and you have been so kind to me and you've impacted my life so many ways and I'm so glad to have so many of you in my life and enjoy your day because this is your day. Go. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. I love you. I love you. So much. I love you so much. Happy 
and let her stay mom. I love you. Happy Mother's Day, love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you. We love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. I love you. We, we love, love you, Mom. Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Happy Mother's Day. Love you, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Love you. Happy Mother's Day. Jed and I wanted to wish you a very happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you and I hope you enjoy your day today because guess what? You deserve it. Happy Mother's Day! I love you, Mom! Happy Mother's Day to all the moms out there. We love you. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. Happy Mother's Day, Mommy. We love you. We love you. Happy Mother's Day! We love you! I love you, Mom. Happy Mother's Day. Give her a hug. Well, happy Mother's Day again. I hope you enjoyed that video. Sarah, thanks for getting videos of your brothers. I like that last touch with give me a hug. Um, I hope uh, many of you are able to hug your mothers today. I know many of you will not be able to hug your moms. Uh, but we want to still honor our mothers. In fact, uh, that's what we're going to talk about today. Let's jump right into the text, and then I'll get to the message as we go here. So I want to read this to you. Many of you know this. This is the fifth commandment, and here's what it says. It says, Honor your father and your mother, that your days may be long in the land, and that the Lord your, that the Lord your God is giving you. Now, go ahead and go to the next. I want to talk to you for a moment about this command that God is giving us. First, I want you to see that God is telling us to honor. The word for honor in uh, the Hebrew is the word kaved, and kaved basically consent, uh, uh, conveys a sense of like heaviness. It's, it's, very, it's, it's pretty much the word for holiness here, but it's kind of the verb that uh, you would use for holiness. But when it's used in this way, basically what it's used for is to remind people that you are to make someone or something important. And so we are told that we are to honor, and, and not just to say that something is important, but to actually kind of feel it inwardly. So many of us, we, just because of the way we were raised, and we were raised with a very, uh, what I would call like Greek or kind of Western mindset, we think that as long as we say nice things or kind of believe that something is true, that we actually mean it. But for the Hebrew people, it was a lot different than that. If you were going to honor someone, you actually had to kind of feel it inwardly. It means actually to basically to really respect somebody, to really appreciate someone for the position that they hold or for who they are, for what they've done, or for the place that God has given them in your life. Now, we are told that we are supposed to honor our kaved, our mothers. And this is interesting, obviously your father as well, but it's Mother's Day, so we're focusing on mothers here. Now, why is this the fifth commandment? Some of you have heard me talk about why I believe this is the fifth commandment. And, and you have to remember that the first four commandments are all about your relationship with God, how you should interact with God, how you should view God, what you should do to spend time with God, all of that. So it's all about your relationship with God. And then now, the very next commandment, after the first four commandments that are talking about your relationship with God, begins with a commandment about your relationship with your parents. Now, the reason why God, I think, goes from the first four commandments, about him, talking about how you are to be in relationship with Him, to your relationship with your parents, is you learn one of the most important things uh, about how to be in relationship with God, in your relationship with your parents, how you treat your parents, and how you honor them. 
Your parents are the first people in your life that you learn how to love, that you learn have a sense of authority in your life, that you learn have some power in your life. And so we are to honor our parents in the same way that we were to honor God. And it begins with them. Uh, as you were growing up, you will uh, remember or, or you know because that's where you're at. Like your parents, they have the greatest sense of authority. They have the greatest sense of power in your life. And hopefully you adore them more than anything. Now, there's a name for God that is used in the Old Testament that references God as basically the all-powerful one, the one that we should always bring honor because he is in control of everything. Um, he is the one who gives life. He is the one who takes life. He is the one who nurtures us and all of that. And it's this name here. Go ahead. Go there. It's El Shaddai. In other words, what this means, I guess I should tell you, is it means God Almighty. El means God. Shaddai means Almighty here. Now, I want to show you where this word probably comes from. You know, the, 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 the uh, um, scholars are, are split on this, but it comes from basically these two words, like the origin of this word comes from this next word here, which is Shaddad, which means destroy. And so you think about God Almighty, God has power in his life, he can get in his hands, he can give life, he can take life, power belongs to God. And so this idea of Shaddad, um, and it being uh, kind of tr transforming into the word Shaddai, goes fairly well with God Almighty. And when people would have read El Shaddai, they would have thought of the word Shaddad, that God has the power to destroy, like power is in God's hands, like he has authority, he's able to protect these people as well. And you remember, if you remember, the Ten Commandments were given to the Israelites as they were brought, as they were brought out of Egypt. And so they had seen how God has had 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 displayed His power over the most uh, 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 basically the biggest empire in the world at that point in time. And so they had seen this, and God is showing them that He is God all. He has shown Himself to be God Almighty. And then this next word, and you're going like this, right? is shed, and it means breast. Now, I, I know what you're thinking, right? But what this actually means, and it kind of almost evens out this word destroy or shadad here, is breast is a symbol of nurturing, right? Now, I, I know many of you don't know that, but nurture, right, is actually what they're for. So, um, but what we see here, and God being God Almighty, is a God who both has power in our lives and yet nurtures us. He is the one who sustains us. He is the one who gives us life. And we are taught here that we are to honor our parents and our mothers in particular, who, by the way, are uniquely designed to nurture their children from the very beginning. And so we are taught to honor them or covet them, to see them as important because they both nurture us and protect us throughout our lives. And so we need to give honor to our mothers. And then here, let me show you this. There's a promise with this commandment. This is the only commandment with a promise. If we will honor our, our mother and father, if we will honor our parents, this is the promise here, that your days may be long in the land. Now this promise was given to Israel. So church, you need to think about this promise is given to you. Of course, it's given to individuals, but it's given to the collective. It's given to the whole. And so we need to see this as a church as something that we need to be about as the people of God. This is the kind of people that we need to be, people that will honor our mothers and fathers. If we want to be the kind of church that God wants us to be, if we want to experience the joy of God, the, the pleasure of God, uh, the spirit of God, we have to be these types of people. And what God wants us to do is he wants to, us to be the type of people that show gratitude towards those who nurture us and protect us. And he wants us to model it. it the, the, the idea that it will, it, the days will be long in your land is not a, a promise that you know you're going to live forever or anything like that. But rather it's a promise that if you do these things, these things will go well in your life. And think about it this way. If we create a church or create a culture, right, that no longer honors our, our mother or our father, we're just going to experience the natural consequences of a, 
a community or of people or of individuals, right, who don't experience the joy of God and who maybe even feel like the church is no longer the church or your home is no longer your home. You, you know, when we think about even, because if you think about this, I guess, the, the days may be long in the land, you would think, well, maybe okay if they don't uh, uh, obey the Lord. Um, God will punish them. But I, I really think these are just kind of natural consequences to not honoring your father, mother and your father. Like, things just won't go right. You destroy yourselves if you don't honor your parents. Think about it this way. If I don't honor my parents, my children will see me not honoring my parents, their grandparents. They then, in turn, will not honor me. And as I age, I, I hope my children will have seen that I loved my parents, that I honored my parents, and that they will honor me. I hope they see that I did what I could to take care of my parents. So, since, especially since my wife has nurtured our children, I've done my best to help. She does all the work, right? I mean, we have to give credit where credit is due, but that you'll create a family, that you will create an atmosphere, and that we will create a church that takes care of the elderly, that takes care of those who are aging, that takes care of those who can't care for themselves, that takes care of those who even have nurtured, nurtured us spiritually throughout the years, our spiritual mothers and fathers as a church. It is our job to bring honor and to honor those who deserve honor. And mothers deserve honor. It is our job to make sure that we are a church that shows our moms that we care for them that we believe that they are special, that we believe that they are important. If we don't, we will miss out on the promises of God. We will miss out on being a part of a church that is a church that is about, about Jesus, about love, about care, and about sacrifice. Let me show you how Jesus did it here. This is, this is one of Jesus's, uh, some of Jesus' last words, and he is speaking these words to his mother here. And he says, woman. Now, I know what you're thinking, right? That's not how you would speak to your mother. It didn't have the same connotations as just saying woman in the first century. Uh, this, is, this is even kind of endearing here. And so Jesus tells his mother, he says, woman, behold your son. Then he said to his disciple, behold your mother. Now, he's looking at John here, and he, he tells John, behold your mother. John is not actually her biological son and then he says and from that hour the disciple took him into his own home two things that jesus does here for his mom first is that he sacrifices his life for her he lays down his life on the cross so that she will be eternally taken care of he makes sure of that he went to the cross for you and i but he went to the cross for his mother too and she was there and she saw that the second thing jesus did is he looked at his mother and he looked at john and he said, John, you are going to take care of my mom here on earth. She is now your responsibility. Jesus wanted to make sure that his mother would be taken care of, that his mom would be honored. Now, this is a very difficult thing to do for all of us sometimes without a heart that has been changed by Christ, without a heart that believes that Jesus sacrificed everything to show us love. Not everybody has had a good mother. Not everybody has had a good father, and yet Jesus still can teach us, teach us to honor those who we don't even think may deserve honor, to love those who may not even believe, that we may not even believe deserve to be loved. But Jesus loves, and Jesus has laid down his life, and Jesus gives us the strength, and he gives us the power to honor our mothers. Now, many of us, I recognize that we can't be with our mothers today because, well, we're quarantined and we're not supposed to be running around and all that fun stuff. And so I want to take time for the rest of the service here and to honor our moms. And I want to speak to my mom right now. We're going to begin with her. Mom, I love you and I'm so thankful for you. I honestly believe that I would not understand the grace of God without you in my life. Uh, I just wouldn't. And it's not because uh, you sat me down and you explained to me what God's grace looked like or how to understand it or anything like that, although you would have if, you, if I would have asked. No. You have shown me God's grace throughout my entire life. 
uh, Bill Carr lost his mom a, a while back and I was at his mother's funeral and Bill's a member of our congregation and I was uh, talking to Bill and he said, Pastor Josh, you know, no one loves you like your mother. And I will never forget that because it's true. So mom, thank you for the love that you have always given me and that you continue to give me. You're a wonderful mom. And I'm so thankful to have had you as my mother. I think it's important for us too, especially men, to model uh, honoring our, the mother of our uh, children. If we want our children to honor their mothers, we must be honoring our wives as well. So Emily, you deserve more honor than I can even give you. You deserve more honor than our kids give you for certain. You are a fantastic mom and you are a great wife. I love you so much and I am so thankful that you are my wife and the mother of my children. You are someone who continues to teach uh, what is most important to the both of us, to our kids, which is to love God and to love other people. You are so supportive of myself and our children. And I am very thankful for that. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Happy Mother's Day, Emily. You both deserve it. Now I've asked a few others to come and join me uh, to continue this time of honoring our mothers. Good morning, church. Uh, happy Mother's Day. I know the Mandarin clan, we really miss you guys and miss this place, so we can't wait to get back. Um, I'm humbled uh, to be able to speak on behalf uh, of really the two most important women in my life, uh, my mom and my wife. Um, I like telling stories, so I'm going to do that. But many of you know that the game of football to me is important. Obviously, I do it for a living, but it's, it's created a lot of uh, great relationships with me, uh, for me, and it's been a huge part of my family's life. Um, so that's, I'm going to tie a lot of that into it because both of these women uh, play a huge role in that in my life. Um, back in 1998, um, I was in fourth grade and I wanted to play football. And where I was living, um, we didn't have youth football at the time. So in order to play <coughs> youth football at that time, you had to go to the neighboring school in order to do that. And at that time, there were big rivals. So that wasn't happening. So my mother, Dana, started youth football. Uh, as the president at, uh, at Crestwood, and it's still there today. Um, she did that because her son wanted to start playing football. Um, and obviously, I played football in the college. Um, and another story about my mom as it relates to football just means tremendous, um, means a lot to me. Uh, my first college football game was in Ames, Iowa. We were playing Iowa State. Um, and my dad was out of town, his company's out of Israel actually, and he was out of town. So, you know, my mom was, you know, contemplating whether to go or not go, and, you know, I can get her tickets, of course, and things like that, and, you know, I was worried about her going by herself um, from Ohio to Iowa, because my sister uh, played softball at Ohio State, and she was playing the following day in Columbus. I said, Mom, that's just, just, just way too much traveling for you. It's unsafe to go by yourself. Um, but she wouldn't have it. Um, she made me get her a ticket, and she drove from Ohio to Ames, Iowa to see us actually upset Iowa State. It's one of the biggest games I've ever been a part of. And just to see her face and to hug her after the game, to know that she drove there by herself to see me play my first college game, and then get in the car and go back to Columbus, Ohio to watch my sister. Just uh, tremendously supportive, Mom. Uh, you held our family together for so many years and uh, you know, made my childhood tremendous. Um, love you very much and just pr so appreciative of your support and care for me. Yeah. To my wife, Christina, um, uh, wow. Uh, I, as you know, I came to the relationship with a lot of thorns, um, but you looked past that, so you showed me so much love and grace uh, from the very beginning. And as we were dating, um, you don't even know the story, but as we were dating, um, you know, I could just totally tell that you were gonna be a great mom. And for me, as somebody who wanted to be a dad someday, um, that was that meant a lot to me. And to see, you know, you, you know, Christina's mom's a babysitter, so to see how she handled little kids and things, it just, um, it was just a blessing to me to see, just knowing how uh, a good of a mom that you were gonna be. Um, obviously, you've surpassed uh, that um, tremendously because now we have a five-year-old, 
a four-year-old, a three-year-old, and now a one-month-old at home. Um, so you're a rock star. Yeah. And as many of you know, that I'm, uh, I'm in the fall, I'm gone uh, quite a bit to coach football. It's a passion of mine and, and, and things. But she does it um, with great support. Uh, she does it tremendously. It's not easy um, because of the kids' age, and they're very active, and um, they always want to know where Daddy is, and she does the very best she can to explain to them that I'm gone to help make a difference in other kids' lives. But in order for me to do that, I need somebody at home to be very supportive uh, of that mission. So, Christina, I love you. I'm thankful for you. I don't deserve you. Um, and happy Mother's Day, Mom and Christina. Again, I'm Pastor Mindy, and I am also a wife and a mother. And I am all these things because of who my mother was. Uh, the kids back in Kids Church call her Miss Kathy. And I definitely owe so much to her. Uh, she loved reading the scripture, and she lived out Deuteronomy 6, 5 through 7, which says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, mind, strength, and teach it diligently to your children. And that was who she was. She served the church in almost every capacity she could. She was a teacher. She had preached at times. She uh, would take video recordings and tape recordings to the shut-ins. She would go and visit people that were lonely. And she also had a passion for helping other people find their place in the church. And so, Mom, I watched these things as I grew up. And those help me to form the person I am, to learn how to serve God faithfully. Also, I remember watching my mom pray. Mom, you are a woman of prayer, and that me meant so much. I knew that you prayed about everything. You took everything to prayer. As kids, I remember uh, when it came time to bless the food, we all knew that we should volunteer because you were always so thankful and so blessed that once you got started thanking the Lord for stuff, we were not going to get a hot meal. <laughs> but that's because you were loving God so much. You taught us to pray before big events, to pray when things were sad, to pray uh, daily for a devotion time. And your uh, love of prayer taught me to love to pray to God. And that's why I pray, because I watched you pray. I also have a love of scripture. You had so many Bibles laying around the house and highlighters, highlighted parts and all kinds of things. And so with that, I learned to love the scripture. And still when you talk about the scripture, you encourage others to love the scripture. And so I watched that as I grew. I have fond memories of, of us all curling up in you guys' bed and, and as a family, we would sit there and you would read scripture to us. And it was those moments that I learned the love of God because you loved us kids so much and you loved others so much. I knew what it meant to be loved by God because mom, you loved me. And so mom, thank you for being a woman of God, for being a woman who cared for me and for others so that I could also serve the same way joyfully and faithfully. Thank you. Dear Mom, today I honor you. I know I should honor you every single day, especially because of the passion I have in my life now with writing that I do every single day. It started and was nurtured by you. I know I could go on and brag about the sacrifices you made or how you always loved me through my shortcomings and my failures, or how you came from a difficult past uh, just to bless me with the riches of joy that I have today. Um, but I didn't know I wanted to be a writer until I was a freshman in college. And I look back and know that you were my biggest fan before that. You would read my short stories and you would tell me to finish the stories with teary eyes, which told me you had dove deep into those things, and that was precious to me. It's one of my, post my most precious permissions to write through tomorrow. So I just want to honor you and thank you that I love you. Happy Mother's Day. To my wife, Angela. 
We were in California all alone when our son was born. Those were some beautifully difficult days. I witnessed a strength from you that I've never possessed my entire life. You've taught me the grace of God and have grown closer to you and closer to God through our experience. Everything you do and everything you do every day, it just draws me closer to in all of you in a closer relationship with God. I just want to thank you in everything that we've, that, we've, that we've gone through together. Happy Mother's Day. I love you. Now that you've seen some examples, now that you've heard it, it's your turn. That's why we uh, came to, and I had, the, had everybody come to show you what it looks like to honor your mother. I hope that you will spend some time honoring your mother. You really should do it every day. We should honor our wives every day. We should make sure that we express our love for those who have protected us through the years and nurtured us through the years every day. Moms, we love you. We are thankful for you, and we honor you today. If you did not send your mom a gift, or even if you did, here's the reason, one of the reasons why we did this is that you can honor your mother through your words right now. She might not be able to see you physically, but I guarantee you, your mother would love to hear about the reasons why you love her, why you're thankful for her, why you want to honor her. So would you do that? Pray with me as we conclude. Father, we are thankful for our mothers, and today we pray that we would bring honor to them. We pray that we would bring honor to them by the way that we live and the way that we follow you, Father. And I pray, Father, that we would honor our mothers by our words. I pray that all mothers watching here would know that we are so thankful for them. And I, I pray right now, Father, for our spiritual mothers as well, those who have poured into our lives and maybe encouraged us to follow the Lord or have pointed us to you in different ways or have nurtured us in the faith. I pray for those who may be watching this service right now and they desperately want to be a mother. And for whatever reason, they've been unable to. I pray, Father, that you would comfort them, that you would be with them. And we pray for even for miracles in uh, situations like this. We pray, Father, that you would give those children who desire children and desire to serve you in the midst of parenthood. Father, we thank you for being here with us at this time. I pray that you use this message, that you use this time as uh, we have come together, as time that would make your heart glad and change our lives and show others and particularly our mothers how much we love them and how much we are thankful for them and how much we love you in christ's name we pray amen <laughs>
Let me close worship in this benediction. Go into your week knowing that you are, in, you are embraced by the love of God, a love that is sweeter and more tender than any you have ever known. Now go in the love of Christ. Happy Mother's Day.